Hello everyone, I'm Marion. Welcome to my channel. Um, a new venture for me and I'm not very experienced at doing videos so bear with me while I learn how to do things. Um, today I'm going to film a few pages of my stitch book. Uh, some of you might have seen a little two minutes that I put online about a month ago and I didn't actually realise anybody else was going to be able to see it. It was more for my own benefit. So I was part of a 100 day project online and it was started by Anne Wood of Anne Wood Handmade and she has a little community of um, people who join together to do different projects and I joined in with this one just a couple of weeks before it started in January and the idea was to make to do hand sewing for a minimum of 15 minutes a day and after five days you'd completed a page and after 100 days you would have a completed book and having not done anything like it before I just thought well join in and see what happens and so I did so I'm going to skip over the front page for the moment and skip straight to page number one so this was the first one I did and the idea was really to do quite an abstract thing and very free and not to think about it too much and so I was using little bits of material, scraps, a little edge of a hanky um, and I just put it all on with running stitch. The little buttons finished it off and although I do like it, it wasn't really the sort of thing I would normally do um, and I wasn't sure whether I was actually going to continue but I had promised myself I would do it for 100 days so I did start page number two. And so this one, it's still a, a little bit abstract, but more a bit more designed. Um, these are actually um, torn up strips of one of my paint rags because I do do a lot of painting and crafting and I'm always keeping my old bits of torn up sheets to wash my brushes in. And so this actually was a bit of a paint rag. And when I opened it out, I thought it looked quite pretty. So I tore it into strips running stitched it down with some stranded embroidery cotton and I was left with the little square in the middle and so a bit of a bit of cheesecloth got put on and this little bit of junk was in my uh, box of all sorts of bits and pieces that I use for well, whatever comes about. I probably had a cameo or something in the middle originally um, but I thought it it might look good there like a bit of a watch chain or something um, and I found a little bit of canvas did the heart and it just sort of fits in there nicely sorry I know I've got lots of shadows on here I thought it would be nice to do this in the garden because it's a sunny day so we'll see how it gets on anyway I quite I quite like this when I did it and so off, I was off and running so page number three is actually wool from a wool sample book um, and so I, because it was wool I thought I'd carry on with wool embroidery and actually just chain stitch the cherry tree in French knots for the flowers leaf stitch for the leaves a straight stitch down here and by the end of four days I'd actually really finished it but I had another day where I was supposed to work on it and so I just added the French knot, pink French knots here and I thought it looks like the wind blowing the petals off the cherry tree and so I came out quite nicely. Um, number four, I was starting to look around for things I could use that I already had and this bit of cross stitch it's actually done years ago and it really was just a practice of using up this variegated thread. I wanted to know what it was going to look like. But it never got turned into anything, never got made in anything, but it's the sort of thing I wouldn't throw away. So I found it in the bottom of my sewing box and I had a blank spot here, which if my memory serves me right, was actually where I was going to embroider a cat. And if you think of it the other way around, that would have been the cat's bottom. So... <laughs> The way I picked it up, it looked like half of a heart and I had this ribbon, which I'd never used. And so I just sort of thought, oh, I'll do a woven heart. I was trying to do experiments of things I hadn't done before. So I quite like that. And this green was left over from a costume I'd made somebody. And this piece of bobbin lace 
Well, I'd actually made that myself absolutely years ago, more than 30, I would think. And it was an experiment to see if I could do it. And originally it was going to make enough to put on the front of a blouse. But I never really got away properly with it. I mean, it was the days before the internet and YouTube and, and being able to find out. And I was just trying to learn uh, how to do it myself from books. Um, but this little piece ended up in my sewing box and it seemed the good time to let it come out into the light and get used. And so it got sewn onto there and just a little bit of random all sorts on the bottom and dyed the lace and the bits of silk off an old blouse and I just sort of kept putting them on to just make an experiment really so that came out fine so these two these these started me off on doing more nature things really this was actually done first and it was all inspired by this green material. I just made a cardigan with a green frill and this green fabric was very fraying. And when I was picking up my scraps, it just looked like grass. And when I put it together with this brown linen, it just made me think of weedy ground. And as soon as I thought of weedy ground, I thought, oh, I'm going to do a dandelion. Because I quite like dandelions. I think if they weren't so invasive in people's gardens, they'd probably want to grow them because they're so beautiful. You see the verge is full of them in the spring. It lifts your heart. They're so colourful and pretty. And so I, I do quite like them. Um, so I put that on. I drew the dandelion stalks just copying a picture out of my wildflower book and um, I actually did this with a bit of raised stem stitch so it's actually a little ladder that goes on here and then you stem stitch over the top and it makes it quite 3D and because I'd done that raised up I made these little needle lace picots to carry on the the sort of 3D-ness of the page and then the embroidery cotton, oops, want to fall off. Embroidery cotton to finish the dandelions. And of course, if you've got dandelions, you have to have a clock as well. So that's why that came on. So that's um, mattress ticking, that's the background. And then these are just satin stitched on. So I really, really like the way it came out. And in the Stitch Club community that I was part of, everybody really liked this. But of course, it got me thinking of wildflowers. The snowdrops were out, and so that's why I did the snowdrops. And for a white flower, there's actually not much white cotton on it. There's a lot of grey, there's a lot of beige. Uh, and actually, was a lot more work on it than this one. So the ground is a bit of Japanese kimono cotton that I'd got in a bit of a scrap bundle. And these are just leaves cut out of green material I already had. And then I embroidered the snowdrops. Again, it's the mattress ticking for the background. So none of my book, I had to buy anything. It's all old clothes, scrap stash, things that have been in my sewing room for absolutely years, which is what happens when you've sewn for a long time or crafted or knit. You just end up with a big stash of all sorts of stuff. And I really appreciated the opportunity to use a lot of it up and bring things out of the dark and into the light and into my stitch book anyway i'm going to leave it there um and do another video for the next few pages because i don't want my videos to be very long at least that's what i've been told i haven't got to have them very long so i shall make another one and i'll post it in a few days time so i'm going to just leave that there and say I hope you've enjoyed that and let me know um, whether you want any more in-depth tutorial about it um, and I'll try my best to do that. It is a brand new venture for me. I'm not on social media at the moment so this is totally big adventure. Um, or like Peter Pan would say an awfully big adventure for me and um, thank you for watching bye bye oh i don't know how to say bye 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 see you next time